Okay, so we're on page 79, and we're going to look at quadratic forms. Okay, so it says, in Mem 1020, we discuss conic sections, parabolas, hyperbolas, and ellipses. The standard forms are blah, blah, blah. I don't think that's going to be important. I just know that there are equations for parabolas, hyperbolas, and ellipses. It, it's, I think it's actually okay, I don't even know that yet. Because, whatever, the general quadratic form in two variables is ax squared plus 2bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals 0. Okay, so it's, it's got an x squared term, an, a y squared term. It's got x's and y's in the variables, and it's got constants. X's and y's in the variables, and then it's got one term with no x's or y's, a term with, a, a term with one x, a term with one y, a term with like two y's, like y squared, a term with two x's, like x squared, and a term with x times y, and there's a 2 in front of that. It's like 2b, because you can think of it as bxy plus byx. Okay, that's why there's a 2 there, I think. Okay. And it says that all of the standard forms can be expressed in a general quadratic form. Okay, let's just, just take that on, on faith. But some general quadratic forms are not standard forms of conic sections. Specifically, if b is not equal to 0, the term 2bxy does not appear when any of the standard forms are expanded. Okay, let's, whatever, let's believe that. What type of curves are these quadratic forms if b not equal to 0? We will use orthogonal diagonalization to show that they are parabolas, hyperbolas, and ellipses, but they are rotated so they're not square to the xy axes. Okay, so all of this is saying simply that we are in this section of quadratic forms, we are going to figure out how to sketch. Things like this. Okay, that's all. Here's an example. Plot the conic section represented by, and that should obviously be 8, 16x squared, not 16x2. 16x squared plus 9y squared plus 64x minus 18y minus 71 equals 0. Okay, so that's clearly the same form, except there's no xy term. This quadratic form has no xy term. So we can reduce it to one of the standard forms by completing the square. Okay, never mind that. This is a thing that's only going to work when you don't have an xy term. So I'm not interested in it. I'm interested in a way that will work even when you have an xy term. Okay. When there is a non-zero xy term in the quadratic form, the problem is significantly more difficult. Yes. For example, plot the conic section represented by the quadratic form 8x squared minus 8xy plus 2y squared plus the root 5x plus 2 root 5y equals 5. Solution, this quadratic form has a non-zero xy term, so for these problems, we should write the quadratic form. Okay, now they give the general form of this, right? So they've replaced the actual numbers with, uh, with um, constants a, b, c, d, e, and f, okay? And they've used, they've used this 2b thing, okay? And then the point is that you can write this in this form as a matrix equation, okay? So how does this, how does this thing work? Well, the a term here corresponds to x squared. The term here corresponds to y squared. Here, this term corresponds to xy, and this term corresponds to yx. So it's like this matrix has been labeled with x, y, x, y. And where you have xx, that's x squared. Where you have yy, that's y squared. And where you have xy, it's xy. And where you have yx, it's yx. OK. We've times it out, you can check that it works like that. You do the row times this thing, you get ax squared. Let's actually do this. You get you times out this matrix by this vector, you get what? You get ax squared plus b sorry, you don't get ax squared, you get ax plus by, and you get bx plus cy. Okay. Then you multiply that by xy on its side. This is like the first time in this course, I think, that we've really actually used a, a vector on its side, a row vector instead of a column vector. Um, you do times that out, you're going to get ax squared plus byx plus bxy plus cy squared, right? Exactly what you had before, because byx plus bxy is just 2bxy. Okay, so that works out. Then this all works out to giving you all this stuff, right? The stuff with 
the stuff with x squareds, y squareds, and x y. So the stuff with two variables in it, that's given by all of this. Then the stuff with one variable in it, x and y, that must be given by this. Yeah, you times this out, you get dx plus ey, that. And then the thing with no variables, we take that to the other side, so it becomes minus f. Okay. So this actual quadratic form we had with, with numbers, right, as the original that example, we can write that with, uh, it's going to have the 8 over here, 2 over there, and then minus 8, so split that into minus 4 and minus 4, okay, because you're going to have xy term and a yx term, which together give you the xy term. Then here we have, well, you factor out the root 5, and then you have 1, 2, okay, to get the root 5 plus 2 root 5, okay, and on the right we have 5, okay. Um, some comments. Let me first make a comment. X transpose, of course, that just means the column vector xy on its side, so as a row vector, swap columns and rows, right? To make the column vector into a row vector, x transpose. That's a short way of writing that. Okay, and they've named this matrix in the middle A. Okay. If you aren't sure that the quadratic form can be rewritten in this way, multiply out x transpose ax and confirm that you recover the original expression. Okay, we already did that. Two, we have some freedom about how we choose the entries in A. It makes sense to split the coefficient of the xy term evenly so that A is symmetric and hence orthogonally diagonalizable. Okay, we've, we've looked, before, we've, we've already seen how symmetric, real symmetric matrices are, are orthogonally diagonalizable. It's the same thing. Orthogonally diagonalizable is the same thing as symmetric. Okay, so we want to orthogonally, this method is going to, for, for writing up for figuring out how to sketch this, sketch this quadratic form is going to involve orthogonally diagonalizing this matrix, so we need this matrix to be symmetric, and we can always choose these entries to be equal to each other because they, they together must add up to minus 8, or in general, they must together add up to the coefficient of xy, which we've written as 2b for this very reason, so that we can easily, so we can easily see that it's b, b. Okay. Anyway, now, having rewritten the quadratic form this way, we will now orthogonally diagonalize A. First, we must find its eigenvalues. Okay, so the matrix A was 8 minus 4 minus 4, 2. So, of course, this is going to be the characteristic equation. So, you just solve that and find... Do you know what? Let me just take this opportunity to solve it in the way I like to solve these things. Also, good idea to actually just do all the stuff that they do, you know, but in the way you like doing it. So... Let me say, we must find its eigenvalue. Let me take this. We must find the eigenvalues of A. Okay, so let me just do that. Get some good practice. Okay, so A has got it's eight, min, 8 minus 4 minus 4, 2. So we're going to look at, be looking at 8 minus lambda minus 4. And then minus 4, 2 minus lambda. Okay. Uh, let me start. Maybe do some, let me rather solve this with some Gauss reduction. So what happens if I add row two, row 1 to row 2? So I go... So row 2 to row 2, I add row 1. Okay, what happens to this thing? We're going to get 4 minus lambda, and we're going to get minus 2 minus lambda, 8 minus lambda minus 4. That's not helpful. Okay, so that's not a good thing to do. Let's not do that. What would happen if I rather added to column two, I added column one? Okay. I would get column two would become four minus lambda minus two. That's not helpful either. Okay. I assume the other way is not going to be helpful either. Adding row two to row one, we're going to get. No, it's not going to be helpful. Oh. Isn't, does, is there not a nice way of doing this, this, this uh, finding this determinant? Remember, what we want to generally do is make it into, reduce it into an upper triangular form and then read off the diagonal. And sort of step before that would be to make a make a row or column have some factor a factor including the uh, a factor of the you know of the characters of the polynomial that we can pull out. Mm, I can't see how any other way to do this, except for just calculating it straight. And that's what they do, so never mind. So they calculate it straight. 8 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda minus 4 times minus 4 is 16, or minus 16, backwards, okay, equals 0. Okay, so 
Oh, let's just check this. So, how do they work that out? 8 minus lambda is... So, you have 8 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda, that's 16 minus 2 lambda minus 8 lambda plus lambda squared, and then we have minus 16 equals 0. So, we have lambda squared minus 10 lambda. That's all, equals 0. And then, yeah, you factor out the lambda. Okay, cool. So, factor out the lambda, so you have, yeah, so you have lambda times lambda minus 10 equals 0. You know what, I actually prefer that. I prefer to have that in the form of... Zero minus lambda. Maybe it's silly, but I prefer it like this. Ten minus lambda. Now it's clear, very clear to me that the that the um, that the roots are zero and ten. Okay. The, the eigenvalues are zero and ten. Okay. So eigenvalues are zero and ten. Now we've got to find the eigenvectors. Okay. So it involves Gauss reducing this to this. Oh, it involves what? It involves solving the equation. Um, let's put it down. So, for example, for for zero, right? For lambda equals zero. Um, we're gonna have eight minus zero minus four minus four minus zero minus four two minus zero is two times by the eigenvector which I will call v1 equals the zero vector. Okay, that's just the that's just the eigenvector equation, but with everything take with all the non-zero terms taken to the left. Okay, so I want to solve this now. So we need to gas reduce. So we could start off with oh let's do let's do row two plus half in fact, look, we can just do this. We can do half of row 2 plus a quarter of row 1, right? No, that's not even necessary. We could just do... We can, yes, we can do it simple. We can do row 1 plus 2 times row 2, okay? So we do that, we get zero, zero there, and here we have minus four two. Oh, this at the same time we could do we could do minus oh, we could do row two divided by minus two. So row two becomes two minus one would be one equals zero. Okay. So that tells us that v1 is going to have to be, well, a multiple of 1, 2, right? Okay, that's exactly what they have. Okay. Um, so that's the eigenvalue, eigenvector for lambda 1 equals 0. Now for lambda 1 equals 10, um, let's just do that up here. There's some more space up here. So we're going to have 8... Eight, so lambda lambda one is ten now. So we have eight minus ten. It's minus two, then minus four, then minus four, and then two minus ten, which is minus eight. Times by v two equals a zero vector. Okay. So we can do. We can now do. We could do. Uh, what we could do? Row what? Oops. No. Let's do. Row two minus two times. Row. One. Okay. That's going to give us. It's going to give us what, 0, 0. Uh, at the same time, let's do row 1 divided by minus 2. So that's going to give us 1, 2. And here's v2 equals 0. And so that tells us that v2 could be one of the, an example of an eigenvector for this eigenvalue would be 2 minus 1. Okay. Which is what they have. Actually, they have minus two one. Let's just change it to be exactly what they have, so that our working is consistent with theirs. Of course, I can, any eigenvector can be multiplied by constant. It's still an eigenvector, so they were just they had minus one times what we had. Okay, minus two one. 
So those are the eigenvectors, or examples of eigenvectors. Okay. The matrix Q that will orthogonally diagonalize A is then this. Okay, where does this come from? Okay, well, oh, orthogonal diagonalization. Okay, so remember the theory of orthogonal diagonalization. So one thing is that we don't need to orthogonalize these two vectors because they have different eigenvalues, and so they automatically are orthogonal. Okay. Though so you could check that. Yes, they are definitely orthogonal. And we, then, we do need to normalize each of them, though. So a normalization of V2 could be, well, the size of V2 is 1 plus... 2 squared, square root of that, so it's root 5 is, a, is, the, is the norm of V2, so we should choose for our orthogonal one, vector, let's choose, let's call it U2, sorry, for our normal one, it's going to be U2, so root 5 times minus 2, 1, and U, U1, it's got the same magnitude actually, root 5 times 1, 2, okay, so then Q is this, it's like 1 over root 5, and then v1 is 1, 2, and v2 is, well, is minus 2, 1. Okay, cool. So that's our q. The, the root 5 came out nicely because both of those, the, the, each eigenvector we found happened to have the same, the same norm, which we just shouldn't always expect. Okay, so I thought we'd diagonalize it. The result of now of Q inverse AQ, of course, then will be a diagonal matrix where the, the diag on the diagonal we have the eigenvalues, which are 0 and 10. Okay. So then in the equation 4.4, we make the substitution x equals, well, little x equals Q big X. Okay, so big X is going to be our change of variables. Uh, so big X is, I hate this notation, it's xy. Okay, column vector. But they've written it with a transverse because of typographical reasons, basically, which are very irritating. Okay, so they said, sorry, they said in equation 4.4, where's that? Equation 4.4, yeah, okay, this this equation. This equation is x transpose times a times x plus then a vector on its side, x equals 5. So we're going to replace all the x's with, all the little x's with qx, okay? Effectively, that's the same thing as, so saying that x equals qx, that's the same thing as saying that now is that q transpose little x equals big X, right? Because Q transpose is the inverse of Q. Because Q is orthogonal. That's because we made it to be orthogonal. We constructed this orthogonal matrix. So effectively, when we're making a change of variables, the new variables, big X, are Q transpose times the old variables. Okay. So, we're, so we had the equation, equation 4.4, and we write it down, was X transpose, little x transpose times a times little x plus it was root 5, 1, 2 times little x equals 5. That was equation 4.4. So now we'll replace all the little x's with q big x, all right? So we're going to get, you know, we've, oops, we have, so we have the qx, this is the x, this will be the x, right, x transpose, and then here's another x, and then root 5, 1, 2, and then x equals 5. Okay. Now, when you take the transpose of a product, that's the same thing as taking the product of transposes, but rearranged backwards, just like for the inverse. It changes the order. Uh, as, as if you think about it, it has to, because transpose swaps rows and columns. So now, for the matrix multiplication to still be always defined, we're going to need to swap the order. Okay. Anyway, very important rule to remember. Maybe... The determinant one is more important. To me. Sorry, the inverse one is more important, but this is also important. So you have this thing, you swap the order. X transpose, big X transpose, Q transpose times A, Q. Okay, that's all they've done in that. They've just, they've just, taken, they've just taken away these brackets by swapping the order of this and making transpose of the individual things. Okay, but now you see we have Q transpose AQ, okay, which is the same as Q inverse AQ because the inverse of this matrix is its transpose because it's orthogonal. And, now, and we said the Q transpose AQ let me put this here, note here that this Q inverse is the same as Q transpose. Okay. Um, is, the, is D, is a diagonal matrix. So we now have X transpose DX and the rest is staying the same. Now actually put, actually put the actual uh, things, actual values we have in. So D, that's that diagonal matrix. Okay. And then here we have root 5, 1, 2. 
root 5, 1, 2 times q. q is 1 over root 5, q is 1 over root 5, and then 1, 2, minus, minus 1, 2. So here's the 1, 2, minus 2, 1. Uh, the, the 1 over root 5 is cancelled with that root 5, and here's the 1, 2 still there. Okay? Times xy equals 5. Okay? Now we actually, so we've set all the actual numbers now for this. Now we do the actual timesing out. So u times this, let's start with times this by this. Of course, this, is a, this gives you the x squared term, this gives you the y squared term, this gives you the, the x y term, this gives you the y x term. These are zero, though, and these will always be zero because you're, you're, you're making this so this is diagonal. This is why you're doing it. So you get rid of the x y term, you get rid of the y x term, and you're only left with the x squared term and the y squared term. In this case, actually, you don't even have the, the x squared term. You just have the y squared term. So you see, you jump straight to 10 y squared. It's not necessary to fill in this step but you can, work it, you can go through this way if you want. But you can also just remember that x, xy, yx, y squared. Okay. Another way of thinking about it is x, y, x, y. Okay. Put that down. Uh, it's like, you know, it's like x, y, x, y in this matrix. Okay. Because of the way the multiplication is. Okay, so we have 10 y squared. Now I need to times out this, which is a bit more tricky. So let's... Yeah, Go times this times this, so you get x minus two y, yes, and then you get two x plus y. Okay, cool. And then you have the one two there on the side to multiply that. All right, so you get what? You get x minus two y. You'd get x minus two y plus four x plus two y, and that all comes to oh x plus four x, right? Oh, this, in fact, that's what they have here, right? X minus two. Oops. Exactly what we get, x minus 2y plus 4x plus 2y, okay. Um, and then the 5 is there, it's still the same, and now things, lots of things cancel out. So you have minus 2y plus 2y, that cancels out. You get x plus 4x, which is 5x. So we have, this equation becomes 10y squared plus 5x, oops, equals 5, okay. Then you can divide through by 5 and set the whole thing in terms of x, and you have x equals 1 minus 2y squared. Now, that's a parabola, right? That's a parabola on its side, okay, because x is the subject of the formula. It's a parabola on its side. It goes through the... It's centered, right? You know, its turning point is on the, on the x-axis, um, but it's not... The turning point isn't at the origin because of that, that one there. It's, its turning point is at... Oh, at x equals 1... Um, and furthermore, turning point, and it's, it's indeed it's x-intercept is at x equals 1, and furthermore, it's a sort of upside down. Oh, it's a shape like that because of the, the minus 2. Okay. Yes, indeed, that's what they put. It's like this. Okay. Fill in, you could fill in these intercepts if you wanted to. Um, we could fill in these intercepts if you wanted to, but there's no reason to do so unless you're having trouble sketching more or less a shape because we're not interested in the big x-intercept and big y-intercept. We're going to be interested in the little x-intercept, the little y-intercept, the intercepts of our original coordinates, not our transform coordinates. Okay. All right. We have, discovered, we have recovered a standard conic form in the variables big x and big y. It's a parabola. We plot it alongside. There it is. What remains is to translate the form back to the original variables little x and little y. To do this, recall that the original and new variables are related through x equals little x equals qx, big little x equals q big x. Yes. In terms of the variables x and y, the x-axis points in the direction uh, one zero. Okay. Sorry. Points in the direction one zero. Okay. What? What is that saying? In terms. In terms of, the, I find, always find this confusing. In terms of the variables x and y, the, the big x axis points in the direction one zero. Oh yeah, okay. So the 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 big x axis, the transformed x axis, is in the, is in the direction one zero, and the transformed y axis is, is in the direction zero one. Okay. Okay, that's cool. The corresponding direction, so it's like we could put here, we could put this is in terms of big X, that's 1, 0, and that's 0, 1, okay? The corresponding direction in terms of little x and little y, the original variables, can be recovered by calculating little x equals 
Q times big X. Okay, to transform to, to transform this this one zero, right, back into the this one zero into the old coordinates, we've got to use the fact that the old coordinates equal Q times the new coordinates. So we just do Q times one zero and that gives us well it just gives us the first column of Q, which is personally I prefer to write that as one over root five. One, two, right? And the y axis, the second column of q. Okay. So then we can now actually plot the quadratic form. So this, this plot is actually not necessary. Okay. What we can do is we can start straight away, write down, put on the x, the little x, the original x axis and the original y axis. Okay. Then we know that these new axes, now they go in the direction 1, 2, and minus 2, 1, okay, so we put that in, 1, 2, and minus 2, 1, and they ought to be at right angles to each other, okay, they need, they will be at right angles to each other, because it's an orthogonal matrix, um, a thing, an interesting point though, is that there's nothing guaranteeing that you wouldn't end up with the y-axis pointing in that direction, okay, in the opposite direction, so now, if it was like that, not like this, so, you know, cause, because, of course, minus 2, 1 is a, is a, you know, we actually, imagine, yeah, remember, we first chose the eigenvector 2 minus 1, and we changed it to what they did. So if we kept with what we did, 2 minus 1, we would have the y pointing in this direction, right? The problem with that is that we have now changed the orientation of the, co of the coordinate system, okay? It's now not a right-handed coordinate system anymore. It, you can see that if you, it's basically saying like if you rotate from the x-axis to the y-axis, here you're going anti-clockwise, but here if you rotate from the x-axis to the y-axis, the new axis to the y-axis, you're going clockwise. So the orientation has changed, it's flipped. Okay, that means that Q would, Q would have been not just a rotation, but a rotation and a reflection. Because so an orthogonal matrix always represents either a rotation or a rotation and a reflection. Now, for the purposes of sketching these things, it's much easier if we choose Q to just be a rotation, not a rotation and a reflection. Okay. And we can always do that because we can always change the, the eigenvectors, right? So let me maybe return to that later in an, when we do another example. But for now... We can say, no, we don't want that eigenvector. We want the eigenvector that they've given us, or that they've suggested, minus 2, 1. That's why they suggested that one and not what we suggested, which keeps the orientation of the coordinate systems the same, so it makes Q into just rotation. The change of coordinates is just a rotation. Anyway, you draw the new coordinates on the old coordinates, and then your new equation, remember, was what was? X equals, big X equals 1 minus 2Y squared. And so then on your new coordinate system, you sketch that, right? And now you have the thing on its old coordinate system. If you wanted to, you could calculate these um, intersections, okay? But that would involve, you know, subbing um, little y equals zero into the original equation, but that's not interesting to do. Don't bother doing that. It's not linear algebra to do that, you know? Um, you could calculate this if you wanted to. You could calculate this point if you wanted to, this turning point. That's a bit more interesting, calculating that turning point. How would you calculate that turning point? Well, what is that turning point? In terms of the, this turning point here, in terms of the, the new coordinates, right, that turning point is, look, it's given by this equation, okay, it's, it's, where, little, it's where big Y equals zero, so it's where big X equals one and Y equals zero, that turning point is 1, 0, okay? So in terms of the new coordinate system, it's just Q times 1, 0. Q times 1, 0. So it's the first, it's the first column of Q. Root 5, 1, 2, right? Okay, that's why they've actually drawn that, like, to go right to that point. Okay. Um, is there anything else to say about this so far? I don't think so. What happens next?
Okay, next we're gonna go on to our closed three variables, so let's leave it here for now.